Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be talking about a very interesting discovery that was made in 2018 by an amateur astronomer who actually was able to take a picture of a supernova that we've kind of never really been able to do professionally. Anyway, let's talk about this lucky event and welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So back in September of uh, 2017, this astronomer by the name of Victor Busso was actually standing uh, in Argentina and was trying to test his new camera. He was trying to see if it was actually any good at taking um, night pictures and basically pictures of various uh, stellar objects using his telescope. And he was lucky enough that just at this moment, far, far away at a distance of 80 million light years away from Earth, specifically in the location of a galaxy known as NGC 613 that you can see in Space Engine right around there somewhere. He was able to capture something that no astronomer before him was able to capture professionally or amateurly, if that's a word. Not really, that's not really a word. Anyway, what he was able to capture was a supernova. And not just a supernova, but a beginning of the supernova an event that has been basically only theoretical until now. The supernova occurred, uh, I think it was somewhere over here. I'm gonna show you an actual picture by going to the Nature magazine right here and basically uh, accessing the files from the paper that's about to be published very, very soon in 2018, A Surge of Light at the Birth of a Supernova by uh, a few people actually, but most importantly they do mention the amateur astronomer that was able to take this photo. This is what the actual photo composition looks like. So there's the galaxy and right here, right in this region, you can see a little blink. Now this might seem insignificant, but this is an event that was extremely um, unpredictable and extremely lucky to have been captured. Um, according to some mathematical calculations, this is like one in 10 million chance of capturing such an event. So far, we haven't really been able to capture these. This is basically just as a supernova happened. Obviously 80 million uh, years ago, but it, the light has just reached us now. Now, if you were to look at some of the previous supernova pictures, like for example, the most famous one, which is this picture right here, this is the infamous SN1987A, uh, you can kind of see the supernova and it's actually very, very beautiful, it looks absolutely brilliant. But the problem is that this is like years after it started. Um, as a matter of fact, many, many years. We're not particularly interested in seeing this, even though it looks gorgeous. We are, however, interested in trying to discover when exactly and how exactly this part happens. Now, all of this has only been simulated so far. As a matter of fact, I've previously covered one of these simulations from the Max Planck Computing and Data Facility uh, in Germany that is specialized um, in this sort of uh, studies, and they use their supercomputer to basically try to predict and analyze how a supernova explosion uh, unfolds. And one of their simulations I've actually showed you previously in one of the videos, it looked something like this. Basically, this is the star score, and eventually things get kind of wobbly and bubbly inside. And all of this is not even a second long. This is like milliseconds. So all of this stuff happens inside the star uh, in a very, very short period of time. Now, this kind of ends here, and we don't really know what happens afterwards. And somewhere in between this part and this part, something happens. We still don't really know what, but hopefully this image right here might actually help us understand what exactly occurs in between. Uh, there's actually a few other simulations from uh, the Max Planck Computing Data Facility that you can look at. And one of them, this is actually a slightly older simulation, uh, shows you a, a sort of a zoomed out version of this. And you can see this is the core once again, it becomes really unstable, it starts uh, sort of swooshing around and creates a lot of really, really unstable uh, waves inside the core. And at the same time, the actual star actu it does collapse and uh, starts decreasing in size. And eventually, it becomes so unstable that the supernova occurs. But once again, this is not even a second, I believe this is actually 0.7 seconds. So all this material moves ridiculously fast, uh, close to basically the speed of light, and creates a tremendous amount of energy, and at the same time, uh, basically creates a lot of 
unpredictable and very, very difficult to estimate and to analyze events. So all of this is still a big mystery to us. We know supernova happened, we know what sort of conditions they need to happen. This is what the star looks like right before the supernova happens. And then something else provokes the actual explosion. Now, that's still kind of, once again, a mystery. We don't really know what really happens between this and the explosion right here that we were able to observe. Now, interestingly, it's probably going to be years or possibly even decades before we're finally able to study um, th even this supernova or basically study supernova in, in so much detail that we're able to understand them and we're able to actually um, comprehend what's going on inside of those uh, supernova stars and basically collapsing stars right before the explosion and during the explosion. We're still not entirely sure why they even explode to begin with. The math behind it is so complex and so uh, unusually strange that we're not really entirely sure about a lot of things. Now, this is the galaxy where the supernova occurred, and this is the galaxy known as uh, NGC 613. And uh, we're gonna just quickly fly through and see what's inside, possibly land on, on a planet somewhere. But unfortunately, the supernova that we did observe is not really represented in the space engine, so we can't really go there just yet. But this galaxy does look very cool. One thing I wanted to mention is that this particular supernova that uh, the lucky astronomer was able to take a picture of was a type 2 supernova, uh, type 2b specifically. And we think that these types of supernova occur when an object has a companion, a star has a companion, and as it gains um, a mass of about 20 masses of the sun, it becomes more and more unstable and expands a little bit, but at the same time, the companion starts to basically absorb um, its partner's mass. And at some point, the star might actually become as light as five masses of the sun. And this is when it might reach the inst instability um, and basically go supernova. And this is what we think happened in this particular case with uh, the supernova in this particular galaxy. Now, once again, it will probably take years before we can completely study it and understand what's happening here. But here is an example of one uh, binary system, unstable binary system. And here's actually an example of a somewhat unstable binary system that seems to have two relatively big stars, uh, as a matter of fact, supergiants, that might one day result in a very similar explosion, type, one, uh, type 2b supernova, where this star might lose enough mass to this star, and then when it reaches approximately five masses of or, uh, sun, it might actually explode as well. For now though, they seem to be pretty stable and happily orbiting each other. Although not very fast apparently. Even though I accelerated this quite dramatically, they seem to be just kind of standing still. Well, that's really cool. And I guess not exactly what I wanted to show you, but we'll have to uh, land and end the video right here on this binary planetary system. Well, anyway. That's all I wanted to show you in this video, and hopefully you learned something from it, and now you know a little bit more about the discovery that was kind of unusual, very, very lucky, and definitely very surprising to the astronomical community. Uh, so, might not happen very often, as a matter of fact, might never happen again, but uh, it did happen, and we were able to actually see the early, early stages of a very unpredictable and very unusual supernova. And well, anyway, thank you so much for watching, guys, and thank you for all of your support. This is actually a pretty beautiful system that I discovered completely by accident. Very unusual looking and extremely mysterious. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. And uh, maybe just maybe you'll learn something that you didn't really know before. And do consider inviting your friends to the channel because there's a lot of things that um, they might learn that they didn't know either. I'll see you tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye bye.